Greetings, brethren. Greetings. I want to draw to your attention what the Word of God says concerning how we treat others, particularly those who wrong us. In Scripture, I want to speak about how we do good to others, speak well about others, even those who harm us. First text I'm going to use here, it's in Titus chapter 3, verse 2 and 3 instructing us to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. So that's the thing I want to draw your attention to. Like, what we, what we say, that's how, where I want to begin there. And in this passage, we're exhorted, that part I'm focusing on is speak evil of no man. That's, that's like what we're focusing on. We're not to speak about others in such a way as to do them some sort of injury. We are not to defame, slander, misrepresent, or revile others when we speak about them. And some men do have a tendency of doing this, particularly in, you know, there might be disagreement on an issue, or maybe someone took something you did personally and they attack you, jump on you, attack your character, attack your person, question your integrity. But the servant of God is to do no such thing. Rather, he is to be gentle and show humility. Also, it's best not to take, some people can do this too, they take the worst possible view. Well, they did that because they're, you know, this isn't good either. Rather, don't take the worst possible view. Don't make a practice of charging others with bad motives, for we do not often know what those motives are. Rather, take the best possible view of situations, whether it be in a disagreement, quarrel, or, or other thing. Exercise gentleness and peace when speaking about that person. Do not enc encourage others to think ill of people when you speak about them. Another passage I want to use, it's at the beginning of Hebrews 12, verse 14. It says to follow peace with all men. Yeah. And obviously, the servant of God is not seeking to make enemies. And I believe it's reasonable to say that the servant of God takes no delight in contention and strife. But rather, he avoids it at all costs. Anything that causes strife is to be shunned. I'll share some passages on this that speak of this issue. First one being in the book of Romans, chapter 16. Verse 17, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. There's an exhortation to avoid controversy. Another one would be in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23. Foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And lastly, this is in Titus 3, verse 9. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Mm -hmm. Now, see, this makes it evident. We're not going out of our way to create controversy, start fights, yeah. create divisions. This is not what the servant of God takes pleasure in. Because controversy, unless it's handled properly, there are people that can handle it properly. It tends to bring the worst out of people, mm -hmm. gets them wild up, gets people angry, fighting, and then they get distracted by the things that they argue about. In regards to men, we do not make it our aim to attack them, but to follow peace with them, even if they play a part in our sufferings. For the flesh, this is a hard thing to do, but it, for it's the very nature of flesh to do harm. People may think it's unfair to show peace to men when they do wrong to us, terrible things to us. But such an attitude is not appropriate for the child of God. In fact, it cannot be said to be the Spirit of Christ. We're... We are going to have enemies, but the source of the contention, the reason for them being enemies, is not to be because you conducted yourself poorly, or because you were out of line, or because you started fighting, you were looking for controversy, you attacked. That's not the, that's not the source. But rather, the source is your connection with Jesus Christ. That's the source of, the, uh, of them being your enemy. But even though they are against us, we're still told to do good to them. Which brings me to my next point. And right here, I want to draw your attention to the words of Christ, who did speak on this matter. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 and 45. By saying to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Yeah. Now, Jesus did say the world would hate us. In John chapter 15, he actually mentions this. I'll read that real quick. John chapter 15, verse 18 and 19. If the world hates you, you know it hated me before it hated you. For if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Also, in Luke chapter 
6, he actually says you're blessed if men hate you. Uh, Luke 6, 22, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast at your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For you behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in a like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But he never says we're blessed for hating our enemies, or doing yeah. doing wrong to them, having ill will toward them. There's no blessing for this. He says quite the opposite. Love your enemies. Now is Christ saying here, befriend them? Certainly not. This is not true. The friend of the world is the enemy of God. But he does indeed refer to how we conduct ourselves before them, how we treat them. That is in reference here. Here we're speaking like the response of the believer to their enemies. If a person curses you, you respond with blessing. If they despitefully use you, persecute you, the response is pray for that man. Some might think it may, this is unfair, it's unreasonable. But did God himself not do good to you when you were an enemy and a rebel? Yeah. Did he not send his own son to die on a cross for those who spoke evil of him, who hated him? Yes. Indeed, at one time you were no friend of God. Right. But that did not stop him from doing good to you. God. And this is what is in reference in the following verse. He, he allows the rain to rain on the unjust as well as on the just. Showing that it's like he's not partial in this regard. Like them being an enemy isn't going to stop him from providing that for them. In fact, in the Psalms it says he's good, God is good to all. All men. Amen. Solomon spoke of, spoke of this, Proverbs 25, 21. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. This shows that same attitude that Jesus spoke of. Not letting the fact that men are enemies hinder you from doing good to them. And treating them with care. In the Good Samaritan, the parable that Jesus told in Luke 10, and 35, uh, Good Samaritan, he saw a man beaten and dying by the road, not giving regard to who the man was or anything that the man had done. We should have the same attitude as well toward others in our dealings with them. If any man has trouble receiving this or doing this, and the flesh will make it difficult for you in this regard. Because the, the flesh likes to strike back. It likes to have its way. likes to get even. This is the way the flesh is. Just recall the state that you were in when Christ died for you. You were at one time deserving death and destruction, yet you were not destroyed, but rather you were saved. If the Lord loved you in such a manner, is it, not, it is not unreasonable for you to love your enemies as Jesus said. Do not allow the actions of men toward you cause you to become hard toward them. Be gentle and meek, seeking to better that person in some way when you respond to them, which is the point of what Jesus was saying about love your enemies. They seek to do harm, respond in a way that will better them in some way rather than making them worse off than they ever were. Mm-hmm. They, do da- they seek to do damage and harm, respond in a way that doesn't bring injury, or give them opportunity to point an accusing finger, mm-hmm. or negate your testimony, mm-hmm. or complain about your conduct. Mm-hmm. You don't want to open that door. Amen. Rather, make them ashamed to speak evil of you. Amen. As difficult as for some of this to do, for the flesh, the Lord can give us grace to do this. Amen. I mean, He gave us the commandment, and with that command, there's going to be divine empowerment to execute that thing that He says. So God will enable you to do these things if you abide in His Son and come to Him when you in the time of need. So we praise God that He's given us these truth, and we will continue to do these things that He says. I'll pray again, and then Sister Barbara will come and lead us in singing. Dear Heavenly Father.